Randy, hello. It's so good to see you. I'm I'm really looking forward to this. And I guess we can just dive right into to first question, right? Which is, who are you, right? For the people who don't know who Randy Walker is, who are you? What are you about? What's your life story? Maybe not the whole life story, but like, who are you? How did you get to this point? Hey, Morgan, it's great to be with you today. And uh, <clears throat> as you said, my name is Randy Walker and I'm the founder of 615 Music and I've been doing uh, production music for quite a few years. My company, 615 Music, was acquired by Warner Chapel uh, in 2010 and then I went on to be the CEO of Warner Chapel Production Music. And I've been coming to the Production Music Conference for many years and so I uh, wanted to just say a little bit about myself for those who don't know me who are new to the business. I'm so excited to talk about my new company, 11-1 Music. And uh, it's, uh, it's sort of a new take on the production music world. And I'm excited for a number of reasons to talk about that today. So it's such a great time to not only launch the new company, but what I'm really excited about is seeing all my, my old friends that have been in the business for a while, but also meeting the new ones. And you know, coming out of COVID and all the things that have been happening in our world, it's just, I'm um, excited to get back out there and meet people and tell them about the new company. So talk a little bit about what got you into library music in the first place. So like going back to 615, what was it about this space that you were just like, this is it, this is mine, this is what I wanna do. How did we get there? Yeah, so uh, I'm a musician at heart. I've played uh, drums since I was a young guy in all kinds of rock bands and, uh, and then studied music uh, at the University of South Florida and then moved to the Nashville area and studied the recording industry part of it. And during that time, um, I had always come from the musician side of things and I was always interested in uh, the other music that's not on the radio. Not the, you know, I love hit songs, but where did all this other music come from? Who makes it? How does it get recorded? How is it treated? Um, from a publishing standpoint and a master recording standpoint. And so I, many years ago, I just became interested in that and sort of made it a, my mission to learn about it. And now all these years later, I guess you could say that I'm, I know quite a bit about production music. So what is the story behind 11-1? Where did it come from? How did you come up with the name? What, what is it about? You know, again, like why, why did you decide to, to really start 11-1? <laughs> well, you know, some people, Morgan, might think, well, what's, what's the deal with numbers and Wachler and numbers? But I, I've always liked, I've been intrigued by numbers. And, you know, uh, there was 615 music, which was based on the area code uh, that is now part of the Warner Music Group. But, you know, I had this big, long list of, of all kinds of cool names. And I thought, you know, there is something about numbers and we came, there's a, a few reasons why. I love the idea of 11-1 and 1-1-1 and sort of mind, body, spirit, and, and also the power of numbers and the number one. It's about, you know, it's about people really uh, doing music and using music. And, you know, I think that's so powerful to, to embrace um, the, the singular person uh, because, that's kind of what it's all about. And sort of as a side note, around November 1st is when we came up with the idea for the company. So there was just a lot of things working in the creation of 111. So the name kind of found you. That's awesome. What's different about it? What, what, why is 11-1 unique? What, what makes it different than, you know, not only different than 615, right, but different in, in the industry. Yeah, because does the world need another music company? Well, I, I like to think it does. And, and we're coming out of a time uh, out of COVID, you know, a worldwide pandemic. And, and but it's also a time to be more inclusive and diverse in our company. And we're going to take advantage of that. And, you know, we already have um, some 
women on our team that I think it's important in today's uh, climate that we that we are diverse and that we sort of uh, em embrace that. And so we've already made a number of hires uh, to to uh, to honor that. And so it's it's different from from that standpoint, the makeup of our company, but also I think you know creating music that is 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 more. Um, um, just what's happening today, and everybody can, you know, competitors can say, yeah, we have the, the the most compelling new music. But I really feel like we're going to celebrate um, composers from not only the Nashville area but around the world, and that's important that we offer music from uh, from different parts of the world. And, talk, about, um, talk a little bit about that. What kind of composers are, are you looking for? Yeah, so we're going to always be searching out um, composers from a, a wide range of, of uh, skills, skill sets, and from some composers that maybe not have, have been represented in the production music world. We want to highlight that. So I, I would say that we're going to look outside the normal pool of of uh, of composers, and so we welcome that, and we look forward to to finding them. Uh, you know these hidden talents out there. So yeah. So another interesting thing about the company that I'm excited about is my son Hayden Walkler is joining me, and and it's been really fun to teach him the business from the ground up. So get ready for Hayden Walkler out there in the business world, which would be fun. And, you know, talking about the team too, we've hired uh, Leah and Melissa on our team and Tamara with marketing. And so we just have such a, a fun group and it's in, um, and, and diverse group. And also Tom Snyder, who's a wonderful composer and a specialist in doing uh, news music and uh, Dave Cleveland and his team, and we just we just have some great people, and we were talking to uh, a composer in Los Angeles yesterday, and so we we just have uh, a great group. What about this industry? You know, things have changed, right? This is a, a different a different industry or a different landscape, I would say, than than maybe when you first started six fifteen. Talk to us about that. Why? Why enter into to the marketplace in you know what would be considered a different a different landscape? How do you plan on you know maybe either addressing it or addressing addressing it might not be the right word. Maybe it's you know confronting it head on or, or embracing it maybe even right. How how do you take into consideration what the landscape is now as an industry and how does that impact eleven one and you know the the library as a whole. Yeah, so it's a it's a challenging time. You know, the one thing about our business is it's always changing and there's just there's new platforms and streaming and you know, new digital ways of um, not only presenting the music to a worldwide audience, but how do we track that music? How do composers get paid? How do we get paid as publishers? And you know that landscape um, is just constantly changing. And so um, that though is an interesting part of the business. And you know there's never a dull moment. I always like learning new things. And and um, so we, we we are entering the space with, yes, a lot of competition and a crowded marketplace. On the other hand, I believe that's somewhat offset by all the new platforms that need music. Okay, so let's talk about the foundation of 11.1. Um, and I'm talking musically, right? So your background is 615, and correct me if I'm wrong, right? 615 was, was generally like news music and, and kind of station jingles that, that really you know, I would say blew, blew you guys up, so to speak, right? And then it kind of transformed from there. So talk about the foundation of 11.1. Are we still looking at news music? Is it, where are we with that? And then how do you, what is the most important thing about the music, I guess, from an 11.1 perspective? Yes, so 11.1, what we're going to be offering is really sort of three main areas. <clears throat> that would be news music, uh, production music libraries, and of course, custom music. So we'll be focusing on those three areas. Very cool. 
All angles. Got to do it. Every single angle in this business, huh? All right. Well, let's talk about building the, the creation process and the building process of 11-1. Building it in a pandemic, right? We were two plus whatever, however many years into, into this thing. And, and how, how did it impact and, and kind of where has that taken you through 11-1? Yeah, it's a great point during a pandemic. It's, it's been an interesting time, but it's allowed us to write a lot of great news music. And we've been doing that with Tom Snyder and myself for the last couple of years. So we've, in a sense, been able to really focus on creating uh, some just incredible new news music that I think the world hasn't heard before. And we've been able to create some things that I think uh, broadcasters are going to be excited about. Um, we're also uh, taking this time to create some production music libraries and and then think about a pretty cool way to market it with Tamara and her team to um, to bring it to the world and how are we gonna you know ex get this ex uh, get this exposed and so it's been a, it's been a great time to to do all of those things in, uh, and then get ready to, uh, to launch. Talk to me about some of the challenges that you are seeing in the industry. And, and I know, you know, to circle back on the, the co-founding of the Production Music Association, talk, so, so two parts really, right? What are the challenges? Uh, maybe three parts. What are the challenges that we're seeing? Um, how, why and how did that lead you into to the Production Music Association and co-founding that? And then, you know, what what do you see is important as a publisher? What's your role as a publisher, you know, in you know the community, in the Production Music Association? What is what's the publisher role? Yeah, so uh, the Production Music Association is an important trade organization of 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 which I am one of the founders. And, you know, it's always been interesting to me to sit in a room with, with my competitors and how that dynamic can be different uh, and, and maybe challenging. However, what I found even during my time as president of the PMA is that we have been able to find common ground in, 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 in uh, practices and best practices that benefit not only us as publishers, but the composer community at large. And I think uh, that's why I think the PMA is valuable to, to its members and, and really to the industry. It helps uh, educate and we do seminars and, and, and a lot of things just to make the business better. And uh, I think that's, that's an important thing. So at 11.1, we want to make a concerted effort that all composers get paid 100% of their performing rights royalties, not only in this country, but around the world. And we think that's, it's important to make sure composers are properly compensated. There's a lot of crazy business models out there, and I think that's one important point that we're going to stick with. Um, and uh, we just feel, uh, feel that's the right thing to do. The other thing that is really important to us is we feel that the world is ready for some new ways of um, producing music, and we got a few tricks up our sleeve uh, to unleash. We feel like we have some of the best news music for broadcasters, and we feel that some of the music that's out there is a little tired sounding, and so we're ready to bring sort of a new, fresh sound with 11.1 uh, in the news music area and in the production music libraries. One thing that for people that have known me in the business a long time, they know that it's very important to me uh, to be good stewards, not only of the business, but to be hyper-focused on, on customer service. And we, um, we tend to over-deliver uh, from a customer standpoint when we do work for them. And really it's our job to make them look good. And it's really our goal to, to have the customer be able to win awards with the music that we do for them. And that's really what drives us. We, we like to please our clients, but we also like to, to 
overly please them. And that's going to be part of the 11 one strategy as well. One thing that we've learned over the years is that um, we tend to do more mixes and more edits beyond what a customer asks for. And the reason we do that is we've found that broadcasters sometimes might find themselves in a, in a situation where they're, they're like, oh gosh, I wish we had just the percussion and drum track and bass track. They didn't ask for that, but we found that if we over deliver like that, then um, we find that customers really find, the, find that useful. 11.1 and launching 11.1, what are you most excited about? Yeah, I'm so excited to get out there and see people again and meet, see my old friends, but also meet new ones. And, you know, and being able to do that uh, sort of post pandemic and with my son who's learning the business from the ground up is just really, it's going to be fun. And um, I can't wait to tell everybody about our new slogan, uh, marketing slogan, which is music is forever. And you'll see that uh, on some swag. And it's just, it kind of sums up how we feel about music uh, being such an important part of not only businesses, but really of who we are and how important it is to, to all of us. Uh, for anybody who is watching this interview, uh, where can they listen to 11.1 Music? Where can they get a feel for who you are and what you're about? Okay, we're, so we're so excited to launch the new website. It, it will be 111music.com. And we've taken time to create playlists in all kinds of genres and new ways of discovering music on the website. I'm so excited to share that with everyone. We have a new launch video, a marketing video uh, that I'm really excited to share with everybody. It will be there, uh, created by Tamara and Paul. And um, there's just uh, some surprises on the website as well that you may have not seen before. So uh, be on the lookout. And there's even going to be some swag. So be looking for 11.1 Music and Music is Forever. That's a great place to leave it. Thank you, Randy Walker, 11.1 Music. We're so excited to see what, what comes out of it and then to poke around this new website of yours. Um, congratulations on the launch. Congratulations on, on the new endeavor. And good luck to you and, and to your team. It's so great to see you, Morgan. Thank you so much for taking the time. And, you know, uh, I look forward to seeing you soon at the next production music conference, hopefully in person. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing everybody. Thank you.